Hey, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and the Green Engineers, and welcome back to my uh, DIY metal uh, milling machine. Uh, this is the Green Machine Mill. So we have a little bit of news. Uh, I mentioned this on the Green Engineers channel um, yesterday, which was Sunday. Uh, the shop closed its doors permanently in San Jose and San Francisco. So I no longer have access to my sh my CNC machines. So that is kind of the end of an era, I guess you could say. So this is going to become very difficult. Pretty much the only place that I have to machine this guy is my um, my ex boss's shop, and uh, he has he has a bridge port. I'm not exactly sure the travel on the bridge port. So that is something that I could use. Um, I mean, everything here is designed to be on a manual mill that has a little bit more Z travel and a very small Y travel. So uh, everything here should be okay to do on a uh, manual machine. Um, so basically, that is the idea is to do it all on a manual machine. And then um, after I do uh, that on the manual machine, uh, very few parts are CNC. Uh, most of it's just hole drilling and stuff like that. No, no profiling or, or any sort of round edges or anything like that. So, that is the basically what's going on here. Uh, is that that uh, shop is closed? So now I don't have access to any sort of CNC machines, uh, except for my ex boss, and that's only when he's not. Uh, doing something which obviously his business is to do CNC machining so that is very rare to have him those machines be not uh, available and the only machine that I have generally available most of the time has a 20 inch travel I believe and that is the uh, 5 uh, Excel Oops. Excel 5T 2018, 5T18. And that is this guy, because he, he got rid of his bigger ones. Now I wish he had his bigger one. Working area on table is 27.56 by 17, but uh, longitudinal travel is only 20 inches. And the biggest one that we have is 28 inches, I believe, on the X gantry. Actually, the Y gantry, I think, is the longest. But this one here is the second longest. This is 28 inches. So this is 28 inches. Um, and then obviously the Z is taller. The Z is like 30 something. And obviously the idea is we want to machine it all in one go. So everything is nice and flat uh, with respect to uh, basically being put in the vise. So you put down the vise, you machine the whole surface and you flip it over and the machine the other whole surface. Now the only thing that is possibly big enough is his um, Yamasiki AF1060. Let's see. So that is here. This is not right. AF1060. Okay, so it has 41.7 inches. So that one can, this was what? 34, so that one can do it. And hopefully his uh, regular bridge port can as well. But that has a pretty rough XY pickup. I mean, uh, XY, that's uh, what I'm looking for. It's, um, it's a DRO, it's digital readout. It is obviously old, it's pretty old equipment. So, um, we'll see. Uh, if not, I have to do it all on 1060, you know, do some manual machining, boom, 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 back and forth, back and forth. And uh, maybe he might be able to help me out on that. Uh, we'll see. Because, you know, this is something that I would like. Uh, if he doesn't have, uh, if he doesn't want to plan on letting me have access, because he did say he did want to help me. But if he doesn't have uh, access doesn't plan on uh, letting me have regular access, then uh, we might have to uh, figure something out. Or maybe send this off to get machined locally, and I can go pick it up. It's not a whole lot of machining. 
or maybe he has a friend that wants to do it for quite pretty cheap or whatever but I mean it is a lot of material removal it is a heavy plate you know this by itself is extremely heavy so um, yeah so we'll see we'll see what happens so definitely gonna limit it to manual machine that limit as much as I can to manual machining that will open up the biggest uh, the biggest options uh, for me going in the future as the shop is closed so uh, we need to definitely be focused on that. So uh, I'll be looking in the future to see uh, kind of uh, the options that we have for this. Another thing is also I need to be catching up to what I missed last week. I missed uh, Thursday and Friday videos. So I need to do two more videos. And uh, in addition to today, so this is for today. So I think uh, I just ordered uh, I just ordered the nine the nine uh, uh, nine set of my shredder. So uh, I need to start working on a um, a stand as well as a um, a motor attachment for this guy. So that is uh, the next process to do. Uh, so we need to do that. All right. Now, basically what we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, move forward and let's look at what we have. So what I'm thinking today is do a little bit of work on this guy, which is basically we have these thrust bearings now on the right side. The big side, big side, big side. And small side, so big side, so major side, good. And we have our spindle, we have our motor here, we have this motor, we have that motor, and we have that motor in there. So now we have all our motors, okay, pulley here, and pulley here, and obviously this is gonna be shorter. Um, and then we have the same deal here, down. Um, yeah, everything's supported, really, really nice, good deal. So now what we have to do And of course, basically what I'll do is I'll send to uh, uh, high wind these specifications here, uh, these links, and then these links here. Uh, send that to those guys, and then same deal here, these links over here. Speaking of which, it looks like I'm missing one. Sorry, wrong way. Hmm. Hmm. Still the wrong way. Oh, it's flipped. That's strange. Let's just do this and move it in a certain distance. Point a uh, one point six six two. And there we go. Thrust bearing there, thrust bearing there. Good, 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 good. Okay. So now we have all of them in there. We have one, two, three, four of those in uh, the fifth special one. Yeah. Okay. And then we have one, two, three ball screws. Speaking of which, how heavy is that ball screw?
Good. A2 divided by s oops. A2 divided by 16, that's 5 pounds each, so that we're missing another 10 pounds here. Not much. Okay, so I mean, pretty much all that we need here, uh, obviously we have pulleys here, which are going to be very difficult. We're going to have to have, luckily I'm talking to a water jetter now, so I might be able to do a chain setup here. Um, so they could water out, water jet out a chain setup, and then we could do a chain setup. It's not going to protect this as much, the motor as much, if it stalls, because it just starts slipping. So that's uh, one thing. But, uh, or maybe I could find some sort of pulley from a car or something. Or even just a regular, uh, you know, like I showed you guys, just a regular 3D printer pulley, but this thing's already, you know, an inch and an, inch and an eighth in diameter, which is pretty big. That's really big. I can push that there. And also has a key, so that means that we're going to have to do some um, some broaching there. Man, this makes it really difficult now that I don't have a CNC machine, access to CNC machines anymore. I was supposed to use that. It was supposed to last until I finished this project, but it looks like. And also until I finished uh, my day job before I left. So it looks like that didn't happen. So now a lot of this is going to become very difficult to do. So boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, so now the next thing that's super important is this uh, holding this uh, housing in here. Um, so basically, it's the. Um, the housing for this guy which are these generally these two holes here uh, these four holes so let's go ahead and get something started so let's say that this is and it has a base on it not a very tall base let's say um, Let's say that it is a one inch, one inch by one inch base. That should be fine. Or one inch, uh, well, technically it's one inch by whatever this is. 2.283, let's do, let's do square then. 2.283 by 2.283. Now, let's look at how this guy fits in here. So as you can see, we have a decent amount of space. Whoop. I knocked one of my components here in there sitting on my table. So basically that piece is going to have to be over here. Yeah, it's going to have to be over here. Ooh, well that makes it difficult. Okay, so let's do this. It's going to be a block instead of a piece of angle. Originally, I was thinking a piece of angle, but what I'm thinking now is we just have a block and we burrow that, we uh, drill that hole in there. So let's do that. And it's the same depth as this guy here. What's the depth here? So let's get rid of. Actually, no, let's not do that. What's the depth here? 1.72, 1 
two. And let's drill a hole in it. Now, when we drill this hole, we want it to be this diameter here. It's a 40 mil diameter. And we want it to be exactly in the center. Sorry, it's zoned out here, I was thinking for a second. Ooh, very, very close. So we do not have a lot of clearance here, but that's perfect. Because that means we're getting the biggest ball screw that we could possibly get in there. Now, what that means is that this probably shouldn't be that big. It's just kind of defeating the purpose. So, let's say that this is 1.5 inches, or in this case, uh, it doesn't need to be longer than this. That's 30 millimeters. That's as long as it has to be. Now, let's look here. Let's pull a sketch on this bad boy. Oopsies. Let's capture history first. And let's put a sketch. And that is the whole pattern with obviously the center being the center. That's what it looks like. Ooh, okay, so it's rectangular. So 25, 25 by 43. Okay, so let's do a second one. This is 25 millimeters by 43 something, 43.301, 43.301, and this is 25 millimeters, that's 25 millimeters. Okay, then, so what goes in here? Obviously cap head screw goes in here. Wait a second. Oh, okay, I see. Well, that's another thing is, are we gonna actually be able to get this thing to fit in there? Does this thing actually fit? Yeah, it does. Okay, so basically it's gonna be lopped off right here. This piece here. Cut there. Cut there. Okay, so now we have that same hole. So let's see, what type of bolts are we talking about in here? Me uh, preferably standard. Keep everything on this thing standard. Oopsies. Diameter 4.5. Five point one seven seven. Uh, let's see, um, bolt chart. Let's see what we got. Should really have this thing printed, put up on my wall right here. Okay, so let's see. So we're looking for a 4.5 millimeter, which is the same as 0 0.177. 0 0.177. So it looks like the closest to that in inches is a number eight. 
so that's about 10 thou over so it's five thou per side that's plenty enough to get a little wiggle room for any sort of tolerance so that's good so now what type of drill do we need so a drill for number eight oops Uh, tap drill chart number eight. I'm going to say number eight. 32 is a number 29. Decimal in inches is 0 0.1360. Okay. So 832.1360, 0.1360, 0 .1 so again, let me show you guys because I did this off screen. So closest to 177 is 1640, and that is 13 thou under divided in half for one side and the other side. That's uh, about seven and a half one way, seven and a half the other way. Seven, seven is pretty small. We won't even show it on here. It's a very, very small number, but we have a little bit for tolerance there, so that's good. So, yeah, perfect. And then here, 832 Anyways, um, yeah, uh, so you saw that one. Let me show. Sorry, I zoned out again there for a second. So eight thirty two number twenty nine point one three six zero. So that's what we're gonna drill. And I really should do a standard like stare it instead of keep going back and forth to these guys, uh, cause I get a different engagement all the time, different thread engagement. So, and that's not the best. So I should really be going to the same place every time. So boom, 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 boom. Okay. And now let's punch it through. And that is our mount for our um, ball screw. And then, ooh. Here's the thing, is that this has to go through somewhere and mount. So we have to drill a hole through here somewhere. And we do not have a lot of space here. Basically, it's got to go through here. I mean, that's not that bad. And we could look into all this stuff further, but uh, that's what it looks like, because this is already done inside of the um, ball screw itself so if we do something here that should be okay and then obviously these need a counter bore to go down there or with an end mill or a drill bit and just do a drill bit hole and go down there and then have because we need clearance here so it can't have any holes popping out so or we could just weld it in there I mean, you, you could do a lot of different stuff, but I would like it to be, it would be nice if it could be removed. So let's remove sketches, let's save this, and let's call this Paul School. And let's look at the custom layout here. So let's go ahead and hide that sketch there. Hide the sketch. And let's drop it in. Where is it? Wait a second. Oh, but this needs clearance because this thing is basically gonna. No, it's not gonna be spinning. This is gonna be spinning. This ball screw is gonna stay stationary. 
So obviously we need some tolerance there. Uh, there's no tolerance there. Because usually I design stuff as fitted and then I add tolerance in and I check to make sure that that tolerance will indeed fit. Um, and then I kind of keep that tolerance <gasps> consistent all the way through. So let's see here. <laughs> Wait a second. So yeah, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have this here for right now. And obviously this is gonna need to be anchored somewhere. And it's probably actually gonna be anchored in the middle. So let's say that this is zero, zero by zero, and the ball screw. Okay, yeah, so this does indeed move. Okay. Sure. Thing does not move. I wonder why it doesn't want to do that. Hmm. I mean, we don't necessarily need to joint it. We could just put it there like that. And so basically that's what it looks like. Bearing bracket and then reshow the Y. And there it is. So there you can see it. Bolted in there. This guy goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Obviously we need clearance here, so we need to lop that guy off. All manual machining there. Does it have to be perfectly straight? It just has to be lopped off enough that it clears through the bottom here. Again, there's gonna be bolt holes in the top of this thing. Actually, this thing is gonna have a bracket up here in the front where you clamp it down on this thing. Uh, so we could push it. So we have like some, maybe some slots. We have a bracket here and there's bolts here and you preload by pushing on this thing. You push this thing in and it pushes on the ball screw and basically preloads the ball screw against the bearing so it doesn't have anywhere to go. and have some sort of spring force something or probably no spring force just clamping force so basically there has to be enough force to stretch the bolt and that's going to cause it to do that so either have a bolt up here and you press on this with a regular uh that's what i'm looking for for just like a regular clamp or something um or maybe I might even drill some holes for, uh, so you clamp this down and it's got like two bolts that press on this thing and then you clamp these other two down. And so you have a combination of two, two bolts here, two, and then uh, two bolts here. And then this guy will be in here as well as up behind this one and up in here in the center here. And that will pull the, uh, It'll pull the it'll pull the this guy back and forth, and of course, basically what does that is these uh, these these taper bearings that we're putting a preload on are going to be designed to not move, 
and uh, not let the ball screw move. So those are pretty much what are going to take the, all the load. So we need to make sure that these bolts up here, we have four that they're nice and tight. Because pretty much if we put them here, it's going to be under tension pulling the bolts. And down here on the bottom, if we put them on the bottom, it'll be under tension. I mean, it'll be under like uh, trying to shear the bolt. And uh, shear is way better because it's not going to deform as easily as putting, uh, as basically having the bolt like uh, try to extend. But really, we could have both. We could have the two on the bottom and the two here that pressing this thing in uh, with another two bolts pressing on this thing. And that'll hold it in there. So yeah, that's the idea. And so now we have this this guy rigidly mounted. We have these two uh, holding this guy, not going anywhere. This is holding this, not going anywhere. So now we could have as much back and forth as necessary, and nothing's going to happen. Um, should stay really, really rigid. And we have these nice um, linear rails, so that should also be very rigid. And we're using the big carriages, so that should also stay very rigid. And we should have all together some really strong stuff. So that is the idea. All right, so that is pretty much it. Um, well, let's go ahead and look at one more time. Ooh, got something changed. Oh, this guy. So let's go ahead and update that and see what we're looking at as far as weight. Which the main thing is, let's just look at this. Uh, Ball screw bracket properties masses less than a less than a pound pretty close to a pound but not exactly a pound so it's just going to add up to three pounds and that's kind of one of the last components so we have that we have ball screw here that we need to add with one bracket and a ball screw here with one bracket that we need to add and then we have the bolts for that guy and then we have a belt here we have a belt here with a pulley. Um, Etc. And that's pretty much all we have uh, left here on the mill. So we'll have movement, we'll have ball screw, we'll have uh, we have something here that holds it, has something here that attaches, um, we have something here, here. So we'll finalize the design, uh, we'll make the bolt holes where they need to be. And then from there on, it's basically, we could model some of these other things and these pulleys, like finish the modeling. A uh, couple things there, so we can see it in its full full glory, and then probably work on uh, ATC and work and look at the wiring maybe, and maybe some more measurements as if like if we put in a uh, if we put in a tool holder into here, what does it actually look like at the bottom type thing, and also talk a little bit more about how to actually manufacture this thing now that uh, the shop is gone. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that further as well. So uh, that is about it. Um, so now it's more important than ever to start to get some machinery inside the garage. And this is one of the most important parts because it could be used as a drill press, could be used as a lot of different things. So, um, but that, that might be one of my next purchases is uh, at least to have a drill press. And we'll look at that next in looking at the shredder, uh, the, uh, the shredder project and working on a stand and also a uh, hopper uh, right now for that we might just for this next video we might just uh, look at a uh, some pictures but we'll see uh, again not going to get get too far into it because that's a completely different series but uh, yeah we we're looking good here we just need some final uh, finalize a few things and also look at how some maybe some bracketry here uh, to hold these together. I mean, these, of course, like I said, are going to be welded, but maybe some brackets to hold it uh, strong while it's being welded. So maybe some temporary holes and some spots, some some not very deep holes, um, maybe like 1D only, 1D holes, uh, one times diameter. That's some bracket, bracketry here, bracketry here, bracketry here. Hold this thing and then spot weld, spot weld, spot weld. So that, and then spot weld, weld it solid. So it, so it stays nice and solid, but the brackets will hold it, uh, hold it square and make sure that we don't put too much heat into it, spot weld, 
cool it down, spot weld, cool it down. I mean, no rush here. So that is the idea. And then next would be uh, control, obviously, to build it and then do controls and then ATC. ATC here and maybe some uh, holes here for coolant, run coolant and air in here, the fog buster or whatever. And then chip tray and enclosure, right? So that's some of the things that we have left to do. All right, so that is pretty much it. This has been uh, Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and the Green Engineers, and thank you so much for watching my um, video on my DIY metal mill, also known as the Green Machine Mill. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.